Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Alhamdulillahirabbil alamin wassalatu wassalamu ala nabiyyil mursalin sayyidina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. Asalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Oh, remember we are the Sufis. And to be a Sufi first you have to attain the knowledge of God. from Marifatullah. And there we, you learn about the greatness of God, His attributes, and one more. The second part of it, which is much more important too, is to know about the grand design, the divine grand design, or the law of Mahfuz. Okay? We're going through the law of Mahfuz, the extrinsic and the intrinsic. And uh, we shall now discuss about <clears throat> the confusion. Because low mahfuz is the grand design. Everything there. Nothing is amiss. You can't change it. There is a divine grand design for all these creatures. When you say be, completed, complete, perfect, nothing is amiss. So the confusion is, you can see, number one is, don't you think and don't you decide. Because Allah said, uh, all things we have kept in a clear register, there's a clear register, right? Then he commanded, already, Allah has already set a destiny for everything. Everything has been settled. And he say, woe to you who think and decide. Woe to him how he decided. Yes, woe to him how he decided. So, our Lord say that his plan is complete, final and perfect. What is that to think about? What is that to decide? Everything have been decided by him. Everything is in the grand design. Everything will run according to the grand design. Why? What is there to think about and decide? And that is why Rasulullah said, if everything has been designed as such, the, the prominent said to Rasulullah, if everything has been designed as such, Then shouldn't we just let the design take its own course without us doing anything at all? And Rasulullah answered, don't do that. Just live normally. Now, if we are to live normally, we have to think. We have to decide. We have to even uh, use our uh, unity, strength, and so on. When running our life, we have to do all these things, decide, and many, many more things to, to ensure that our life runs run smoothly. But then why our Lord say, woe to you who thinks and decide? It doesn't make sense. If you look, Rasulullah said, live normally. If we live normally, we have to think and decide. But God say, woe to you who thinks and decide. Is there a contradiction? No. We have to understand that everything we decide or think, everything that we decide or think, all this already in the grand design. So, live, think. Decide, endeavor, do what needed to be, needed to do in order to live. But remember, whatever we think, whatever we do, whatever endeavor and everything else are in accordance with the grand design. Okay. So don't you say, oh, I don't agree with this, I, I will endeavor. I will think about this time. Yes, go ahead. But that also 
at the grand design. Nothing is outside the grand design. Yeah, that's that. You must understand. So that's what Rasulullah said. Be accordingly. And whatever you do is in the grand design. Nothing is of this. If you say, I don't agree, you have to speak that. Because that is in the grand design. Oh no, I don't believe. I want to work hard and su succeed. That was in the grand design. Everything, every action, Everything that we do, all in a grand design. <laughs> There's no, no escape from that. Oh, I don't believe you. I will, I will decide my faith. I will decide my good life and all that. That all in the grand design. Your decision of all the grand design. That is why Rasulullah said, live accordingly. Normally, if normally or cutting, you no. Know, because that is the, the, the grand design. No confusion about it. No two ways about it. Everything that we do, we think, are already in the grand design. And that is why if you think that you, you, you if you are of the opinion that you think outside the grand design, or that you, you do something outside the grand design, and that's where right. Allah comes in. For well, he thought and decided, and woe, woe to him. How he decided, yeah, woe to him. How he decided. See, you must understand that. Because nothing that we do is outside the grand design. <laughs> yeah. That you must bear in mind. Whether you like it or you don't like it, you will do and perform what has been stated or stipulated in the grand design. There's no two ways about it. Okay. So, this is why so that live accordingly. Whatever you do, that already in the grand design. Never for once think that you think outside the grand design. Or you do something outside the grand design. No way, no two ways about it. Everything is grand design. No escape from it. Because our Lord said that my plan is perfect. There shall no be there shall not be any changes, any change. There shall not be any uh, amendment at all. Otherwise, it's not. Always, if there's a man's amendment and very no. this master plan or is the grand design already perfected, complete. So there is no change in that. So never for one thing that you are think outside the grand design or you act outside the grand design. No way. And that's what I'll ask. Woe to you! How can you think that you decide outside the grand design, or you act outside the grand design? Woe to you! No two ways about it. Let let it be clear. That's number one. The confusion that people thought that if everything the grand design, I don't need to work. I don't need to end the work. I, you know, that's wrong. End the work. Work. Think. But always remember what you think you end up with all that is in the grand design. Nothing is outside the grand design. And don't we ever think that we act outside or think outside the grand design. No, no way. That's why I say, woe to you if you think you act outside the grand design. Or you act or decide outside the grand design. No. All your thoughts and all your decisions uh, in the grand design. No two ways about it. So be, be clear of that. That is the number one confusion. Be that clear. The second part is is Allah cruel. Is it cruel? Okay. Now, <clears throat> you heard a lot about hell, hell. Allah punish people in hell and all that. 
you heard a lot and even the Western people say that Allah is very cruel because people keep on saying that Allah will torment people in hell. So you see this, they will be the fuel for the fire. That is, uh, he said that those who, uh, the wrongdoer will be the fuel for the fire. And he said that when their skin have been burned away, we shall replace them with new one so that they may continue to feel pain. So the punishment is your, your skin will be burned, right? And you may die or may, may not die, but your skin burn. Then Allah make it whole again. Then burn again, whole again, burn again. And you continue to suffer. They are destined, destined for the fire, and therein they shall abide eternally. That means you'll be punished eternally. Even your sin is one year old, or two years old, or three days, four days, you'll be punished eternally. See? And what the comment from the Western world? The idea that a good God would send people to a burning hell is utterly damnable to me. The raving of insanity, superstition gone to seed. <laughs> I don't want to have anything to do with such a God. People are taken aback by the provision in the Quran. What kind of God is this? Burning people in hell. Right? It's really something is insane. Can't, you just cannot fathom this kind of action. So I don't want to have anything to do with such a God. Reverend Franklin Graham. The God of Islam is not the same God of the Christian or Judeo-Christian faith. It is a different God. And I believe a very evil and very wicked religion is not. Because why mention hell, the torment in all hell, so God is not the same God to them. And you see here, I still clear, still clear of God. He is an incredible sadist. You see that? Incredible sadist. Torturing people mercilessly. Incredible service. And you see, by the year 2000, we will, I hope, raise our children to believe in human potential, not God, who is cruel, sadistic, right? If there's a supreme being like that, it's crazy. <laughs> and the God of Islam is crazy. If a divine maker fashion everything that exists, he designed breast cancer for a woman, leukemia, cerebral palsy, leprosy, Alzheimer, Down syndrome, and he also caused rabbit to be rip up, uh, foxes to rip apart rabbits, and cheetah to slaughter fawns. No human will be cruel enough to plant such fawn. He was supposed to be a natural being, did so. He's a monster. Not all merciful. So this type of criticism, the Sharia scholars just shy away. They, they dare not to confront. Because the Quran stated so. And so these people capitalize on the provision of the Quran to show God is cruel, sadistic, and whatnot. And so the parable of those who are banned on denying the truth is that of the beast which hear the shepherds cry and hears indeed nothing but the sound of a voice and a call. Deaf are they dumb and blind for they do not use their reason. Now, here is what God trying to tell you. <clears throat> during the prophet period, during the prophet period, okay, those who live there are just like beasts. Did not hear the call to, to religion or to live a good life. 
a pure life, a, a spiritual life, or a clean life. At that point of time, they are so cruel, they even buried their infant, female uh, daughter, daughter, infant daughter, born. They're so female, they buried the infants. They kill. Uh, intoxicated all the time, gambling, even mortgage their wife and whatnot. To utterly uncivilized. That's what God to, got to, trying to tell us. <clears throat> they are deaf, dumb, and blind. I cannot use reason. You, you, you must understand this, what God trying to tell us. That during this time, these people are uncivilized, dumb, blind, and cannot listen to reason. So the only way is to uh, threaten them, threaten them with punishment of hell, to threaten, warn them admonish them with the torment of hell. So, bear in mind, the provision that we read about, the skin will be burned and make whole again, burn, make whole again. You will live in hell forever, eternally. All these are to frighten these people to Come back to full. God does not mean to really do it. Just to frighten them. Just to, it's a threat, but they mean a threat. So they can be frightened back to come to full instead of being so cruel and uncivilized. Again, God said, the parable of two groups is that of the blind and the deaf, and the seeing and the hearing. They are not equal to so those people, those at that point of time. They just will not listen to reason. Okay? They live according to their desire. They kill, they rape, they rob, they gamble. They do not want to live a civilized life. So the only way is God to make them come back to full is to tell them, look, I will burn you in hell. And make sure you continue to burn. It's a threat, it's a warning. But does God mean to do it? No. As of today, anybody in hell? No. Okay. We'll see. When any of them is told about the birth of female of a female, his first his face turned dark and is filled with suppressed anger. He hides himself from the people because of the bad news. He felt ashamed. The wife gave birth to a female. Birth. And what he did? Bury the girl, the daughter alive, the girl. To that extent, the cruelty of the people at the time. And indeed, Allah is most compassionate, most merciful towards mankind. He's compassionate, most merciful. And you say it's cruel, what not, and what Tell me, at this point of time, has he put anybody in hell? Is there anybody in hell? No, but you bad mouthed God. He was trying to schedule, schedule the people to, to, to come back to full. I'll show you at the, an example of this. Truly, your Lord is most loving, most merciful. Nor is thy Lord ever unjust in the least, we servant. Indeed, Allah wrongs none not even as much atom 
of the Tom's will. No. But what are all this uh, provision in the Quran about hell? And there he say, indeed, we have one, one, warning, warning your imminent punishment. So you go back to school, you tell your young child, right? You continue cutting the carpet on the floor. I will cut your leg. It's a warning. But will you cut straight? It's your child who you love. You just threatening him, make him understood, understand that he should not do that. Okay? And warn, warning, right? Warning with those who fear that they'll be gathered to a lot, not for them of other than him, any protector, no any, any intercessor, and then he become right here. So he warned them, you have no protector but me. You don't listen to me, right? You will burn in hell, okay? And this, hopefully, they may become righteous, okay? To cut off all excuses for to one, to, to, to put aside all the excuses of their wrongdoing, and to warn them. And this description of hell is only a reminder. How can you say God? A reminder to humanity. Indeed, the fire of the greatest affliction, a warning to mankind. And you say, God, oh God, Allah is cruel, put people in hell. Has he done so? Anybody in hell now? What are you doing? Bad mouth, speak God. He just frightened these people so that they will come back to school. And I give you an example. Glenn Marcy, to his loving grandchild. He said, if you steal again grandma cookie, grandma will shoot you till kingdom comes. What she want the grandma do this? Right. If she loved the child. That's frighten the child. So the child will not do this. Well, she shoot the child, no way. But she loved the child. And God loved us more than our mother or the world, grandmother. It's a trend. And yet you go to town and say, Grandma wants to kill the grandchild. Grandma wants to shoot the grandchild. Grandma wants to shoot. You are not doing justice to Grandma. She was only wanting the child to come back to full by a threat. Just a threat. Meant to be a threat. Not that she will shoot her own grandchild. Similarly, Allah, He loves us more than our mother. There's a tradition of the prophet say, a normal mother will not throw a child in the park. And God loves us more than our mother. He too will not do so. And He will threaten. Hell is a threat. Not, a, not a, that you will do it, it's a threat to bring them to fall. But you go around the world, bad mouthing God. Allah is cruel, Allah is cruel, Allah is sadistic, Allah is mad, insane. Because why? He put people in hell and tortured. But he has not done so. But what are you doing? You say he as if he had done so. I think it's not Allah crazy, you are crazy. <laughs> Two people are crazy. Not Allah. He has threatened. And you go around the whole world and say, hey, the Islam God is very poor. Islam God is sadistic. Right? And so on and so on. Bad mouth thing God, Allah. And Allah only said that so that People will be fearful, come back to hold. He doesn't mean to, to do it, the trend. But yet you go around town and bad mouth things, but things cruel, sadistic, 
diabolical, and so on. I think those people who say this, they are crazy, not God. <laughs> they are crazy, no, not God. Okay, as I say, Grandma say, I will shoot you, take my cookie again to the granddaughter who you love very much. Does she mean to shoot the granddaughter? No, she loved the granddaughter. It's a threat so that the granddaughter won't do it anymore. Like you go around and say, hey, grandma going to shoot the granddaughter, grandma goes, are you fair? You are not fair. Similarly, you are not fair to God. Okay. So that is second one point that about the hell that is just a threat, nothing more. And yet people, people come to me and say, God cannot track, cannot make track. God will do it. I say, who are you to tell God? Any problem with you? If God doesn't want to punish people, right? You put words into God saying that he must punish. No way. It is you who should be punished. Okay? For one thing, other people to be put in hell. You should be put first. Because <laughs> you're the one who bad, bad, uh, bad mouthed in God. No. So be careful this. Be clear. That's why we, the Sufis, we will definitely defend God and love Him because we know He's not what you say. And you, and, and even the preacher, Islamic preacher, Instead of showing all this ayat or the provision of the Quran, we show God only threatening to bring back these people to fall. He insisted that God will punish them and put them in hell. And you are not doing justice to God. Right? You're, you're blackening his name. You are not respecting him know you uh, uh, being obedient to him. You are rude by telling that he will punish people when he is just threatening. Okay, so we come because he's helping. Tell them, hey, look, anybody in hell? No. no. Why are you talking about God putting people in hell? Don't you see the provision we see? A reminder to humanity. A reminder, a threat. So people will go back, a warning to mankind. But he won't do that. As he said, I, I read to you just now, Allah is indeed most compassionate and most merciful towards mankind. Three, your Lord is most loving, most merciful. Yes. Would a grandmother or mother who is very merciful and very loving would shoot his, his own daughter or granddaughter for stealing a cookie baked by them? No way. So that, please, don't bad mouth thing, God, okay? All this hell, all this torment is meant for warning, reminder to get these people, uncivilized people, back to fall. Nothing more than that. Don't keep on hoping that God will punish in hell, in hell, in hell. And all the world say, Allah is cruel. Don't do that. Okay. And the third one is. <coughs> As a Sufi, we know we don't exist. At least you must understand. We are just a manifestation. Okay? Nothing more than that. A manifestation of something. We don't exist. You see the bottle, plastic bottle. The bottle is manifestation. 
the, the, the whole bottle is actually plastic. It transforms, become bottle. So you only see the bottle, but you don't see the whole thing is plastic. Okay, so we are the manifest. So he manifested. <coughs> Okay. a little a subtle part of him manifested and become us and he's hidden okay. so if he's the manifest and if he's the hidden where are we? you don't exist you are the form he manifested, manifested into a form or transformed into a form we are the form it's like a plastic bottle. The bottle is a form. The real existence is a plastic. So he manifested, the subtle part of it manifested into creation. The creation and manifestation. The, the creation do not exist. So if we do not exist, how can he cruel? How can he be cruel? We, we do not exist. So we can see here. The question with him is, however, which is extremely complex and difficult, is what is the relationship between creator and creation? Are they distinct and separate? In which case, Tawhid fail, falls to the ground, since something will have an existence independent of Allah. Or they are identical, in which case you will end up with pantheism. No. Is I not not identical. Not that Allah transformed him all his whole self become creation. His whole self, then that is pantheism. That is the concept of what that will do. Okay? No. A little bit of it that you call the subtle part, a subtle part of it, that uh, transform into the essence and later the essence transform into creations, other creations. Okay? So come from him will back back go back to him. Inna lillahi. When you come from me, inna lillahi, you want to come back to him. So a subtle part of him transform become the essence. <coughs> The essence transform become other creations or the this Okay, but all come from him will come back to him. It's like you see the ice on the ocean. The ice come from the ocean. When the ice melted, will go back to become part of the ocean. Okay, so that's why he. Uh, Professor Ramadan said, Verily, he exists before others and before time and space. Nothing exists with him, nothing. At the beginning, he is alone. Nothing was with him. Okay. So we don't exist. We are just the manifestation. As I say, plastic bottle. We are just the bottle. The real existence is the plastic. The shape of the plastic is us, the bottle. So the manifestation, the shape of the manifestation is the creation. That is the manifest. And the hidden is still the essence. And behind the essence is a subtle part of God. Right. So, if he is the manifest and he is the essence, so, so we don't exist. We don't have a separate entity, separate independent existence. No. The external and the internal is seen. So we don't exist. Similarly, God is infinite. If we exist, he's not infinite. Right? So you see here, at the beginning, there is God and nothing else. 
So if there is something else, it is not infinite. Okay? That's why he had no beginning, no will he have ever an end. But to everything had he given a beginning, and to everything shall give an end. Okay. And he is the first and the last. I mean, before we are created, he is there. After we are destroyed, he is there. It's like the ocean before. The iceberg is there, the ocean is there. When the iceberg melted, the ocean is still there. Okay. That's why we say, Inna lillahi wa inna hirajun. From Allah we come, and to Him we return. Okay. And also he said, everything will be destroyed. Save his containment. That is see, the subtle part of it, the content. Don't exist. If we don't exist, how can we be cruel to us? Okay. Absolute possession. We can see it. All things in heaven and on earth belong to God, but to Allah. Not only that, even the unseen of the heaven and earth belong to Him. Nothing belongs to us. No, we don't exist. Even our self is owned by him. Absolute possession. He doesn't share his ownership with anyone. So we do not possess anything. We have been possessed by him. We are his creation. Okay? So, you see what Jesus said? All things created belong to the creator. In such wise, that nothing can reclaim anything. Hmm. Even yourself belong to him. And nothing. Thou soul, sense, flesh, time, good, and honor, all are God's possession. So that if a man receive them not as God will, he become a robber. If you use this, use this not in accordance with what he wants you to do, to use it, you are a robber. And in like manner, if he spend them contrary to what God will, he's like a robber. All belong to him. All. Even ourselves belong to him. We, we don't like this. Okay. One have no share in that which he own. One have no share in that which he, God's own. We do not own anything, but Allah owns everything. Okay. So he say, which of my favor you deny? Which of my favor you deny? Everything belongs to him. <clears throat> Even ourselves. We don't have an existence. Nothing. Don't exist. That's why. Uh, Imam Ghazali said, one who knows himself and knows his God will surely know that he does not exist. If you don't exist, we don't exist. How can it be cruel to us? Okay. The next one, are we a painting? If we are painting, how can the painter cruel? It's just a painting. If we are painting, a painting, how can it be cruel? It's just a painting. You can see here. The prophet said, when I went for the night ascension, I saw a lot of dwellers in hell are women. Now, mind you, we don't have the Amagadon yet. Kiyama Amagadon. We have not res resurrected yet. And there is no judgment day. How can the prophet saw woman in hell? Right. There is not yet Emma Garden, not yet resurrection, not even judgment day. How can how can, how, how could the prophet see woman in hell? So what he actually saw is a painting, a picture, a picture. A picture. Yes. And you can see even the Quran say, on that day we shall roll up the sky as a writer roll up. 
So our world will roll up like scroll. Our picture being rolled up like scroll. And he says, heaven will be rolled up in his right hand. His right hand refers to an angel who will roll up heaven. All right? And when the sun is rolled up, sun rolled up. So are we a painting that is being rolled up at the end of the day? A painting. Well, you can see people can uh, uh, draw a picture. Uh, five dimension, you know, not two or three, but five. And look like real. Look like real, the drawing. And people can create, can create animation. And the animation, like real. If human beings can create animation, which look real, definitely Allah can create a better animation, and that is us. <laughs> we are the, the painting, the animation. And if we are the painting, we will be the part of the animation. Is it cruel? Can a person be cruel to a painting? You know. So you can see, first, it's just a warning. Right? Second, that we don't exist because it's manifest in the hidden. And then we can see it's infinite. All the things he possess. And now we see we are like a painting. We are just like a painting. So if we are painting, how can we be cool? Now even the scientists say we are a hologram, <laughs> hologram. Quantum theory suggests that our physical reality is nothing, right? But a very elaborate mir mirage, uh, mirage, very elaborate mirage, a super hologram of mirage and information, a metric according to the theory. The chair that you are sitting on, your computer, your house, your car, Everything that exists around you would be an illusion. Look at that. Our existence and all the existence around us is but an illusion. A super hologram. That means we don't exist. Even scientists agree. Yeah. An atom concept of 99.9999 empty space. That means the computer you're looking at, the chair you're sitting on, and yourself are mostly not there. Right, we are just a hologram. So it can a person got be cool to hologram, hologram? No way. And we are just a grand design. We are depicted in the grand design, master plan. We are in the master plan. For it is he who creates everything and determines his nature in accordance with his own design. And what does I say? But the discovery relative, relatively recently of the extreme fine tuning of so many of the law of natures could lead at least some of us back to the old idea that this grand design is the work of some grand designer, but implied understanding that the designer is God. <laughs> we are just part of a grand design. Nothing more is a drawing of a grand design. Nothing more. And you see, all things we have kept in a grand design. We see the mother of book, and it's a grand design. And we are part of the grand design. We don't exist. So how can we be cool? I would like to reiterate. We are the Sufis. We are not the Sharia people. And we are telling you from the sophistic point of view. Okay? That you don't exist. 
Or can we be poor? Okay. Next one, predestination. So let's see what they say. If I cannot help but choose wicked action, such that I will not be saved, how can I deserve to go to that? I mean, if God has predestined me, predestined me to do evil work, evil things, I have to go to hell. He already predestined that I will do wrong things, evil things, or become unbelievable. He predestined me and has to follow his predestination. Why should I go to hell? Why should we be sent to hell for a life that Allah has ordained to us, predetermined to us? What power do we puny mortal have to prevent it? We can't. If Allah has ordained our life, predestined our life, what else can we do but to accept it? Okay, so, if everything is predestined, and we have no choice but to follow, why should we go to hell? I'm born a Christian, live a Christian, die a Christian. That is my predestination. Why should I go to hell? I'm born a woman. Live a woman, die a woman. How, why should I be, be hell, in hell? Because the prophet said a lot of women in hell. Why didn't I being asked or given a choice to be man or woman? Or why should I not be given a choice to live or not to live? Or to bear, be born or not to be born? Why? If I'm to be born and to be put in hell, I'd rather not to be born. Why should I not be given the choice? Please listen. So these are the questions posed that the Sharia people run away. But not we, Sufi. We'll defend our God. Allah, who we love very much. Okay. So number one, despite the predestination, okay, he has reserved 100 love for his creation. One love he gave, and you can see the whole world can love each other, including the animal. And 99 love reserved for us in the year. And the Prophet said, if the unbelievers knew of the love reserved by Allah for his creation, then they will never be disappointed from entering paradise. You act according to his plan design. You act as actor and actress. At the end of the day, he gives you paradise. You act, say, 70 years old, 80 years old. You get paradise 2 billion years old. Stay in paradise 2 billion years. And the, the beauty of paradise is beyond our imagination. Hey, okay. It's like asking you, to live as a trishore rider, you know, carry trishore, carry people in your trishore for one day and then give you one billion dollars. Like that. You act half hour. Okay. And then you die 80, 90 years old. And then you got paradise for many, many, many years. Okay. So, Although predestined, there is, you have to act according to his script. At the end of the day, he gave everyone of us paradise. That's why he say this world is no more than play and amusement. That is his uh, drama. And the world is his stage. So the world is like, life, worldly life is play and amusement. But here, after you did the real life, if all you did, you will reward them handsomely, bountifully. Paradise. Again, the world is no more than a play and amusement. But if you are faithful and mindful of Allah, 
That means you subject yourself to predestination wholeheartedly. Okay? And definitely, we all of us live according to predestination. That's why I just now mentioned, you will not act outside the grand design. Everything you do will be in accordance with the grand design. And that is where you act accordingly. If you are faithful and mindful of Allah, that means you live according to the grand design. He grant you full reward. The third one is it. What is the life of the world but play and means money? Doing. But best in the home, in the hereafter, for those who keep their duty to Allah, that means you follow, everyone follow our, our predestination, our script. Faith to be. Although we think we, we didn't, but yes, still we act according to the script given to us. Okay? And we be given the uh, paradise. And you can see, he never said, Allah never said, the, 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 the hereafter is indeed the real life for the believer. Never. Really. Okay. For those best in the home in the hereafter, for those who keep their duty to Allah, that means we, the actors, actresses, acted in order <clears throat> we predestinated in script. These are the duty to Allah. We are the faithful. Follow the script, mindful of Allah's script. And the reward is paradise. He never said the believers or the unbelievers. All of us will be rewarded. Whether you are the unfaithful or the faithful, the believers, the unbelievers, same. All of us acting according to script, predestination as certain or as given by Allah subhanahu Okay, so all of us will get reward and rewarded with paradise. And he said very clearly, he said, yeah, a person only enters into paradise. Right? A person only enters into paradise because of Allah's approval, not because of his piety, and that also applies to me. Okay. So it's not you are holy, you are Muslim, you are you are a, a saint or whatnot. No, you enter paradise because of his pleasure, his approval, his pride. Not because of your piety or that, no way. So you follow his predestination. And we have no choice but to follow his predestination. We cannot act outside the grand design. We will follow the grand design to the very root. Until the end. So we enter paradise with his pleasure. Not because of our piety. Piety do not count. That means even you are unbelievers, still you go in. You believers, still go in. You go in because of his pleasure, his approval. And that's why Rasulullah said, a person who committed hundred murders yet entered the paradise because he wants to change and then he entered because of Allah's pleasure. The pleasure of Allah to know that he wants to change. A prostitute, all prostitute, <coughs> her sin was all forgiven. Forgiving uh, <coughs> a dog who going to die of thirst. Water which he took, carried uh, uh, shoe and let the dog die it. And for that, Allah forgave all the sin. 
And she will enter paradise, not because of her deed or by this. She's a prostitute. Because of Allah, pleasure. The guy who will murder 100 people also enter paradise, not because of his deed. He loved the people. The pleasure of the Allah. And look at that. The person who murdered 100 people, not only committed sin against the God, he also committed sins against human beings. But Allah forgives them. And for the people to say, oh, Allah forgives sin as against him, but not sins against human. But it's very clear, he murdered 100 people. Get forgiven, forgiven by Allah. And the prostitute, also sin against Allah and sin against people. Because committed adultery with people's husband know that. Yet Allah forgives. So nonsense to say that Allah forgives sins for, against him, but not sins against human human beings. No. All the sins are predestined. You have to do it. No choice. And therefore Allah is you follow the priest's designation, he approved it. You enter paradise with his pleasure, not because of your good deeds. Your good deeds are, is a predestined. Right? So you can see here. Uh, uh, as for true believers, is there in whose heart he has inscribed faith and whom he has strengthened his inspiration from himself. But the point that I want to show, God is pleased with them and they are pleased with God. They are God's party. So it's the pleasure of God that one enter paradise. Not that you have did all the good deeds, being pious, what not, no great man. The one that great people enter paradise is God's pleasure approval, not your good thing. And they asked Rasulullah, are you the same? Yes. I say, I have to enter paradise because of God played it. Not that because of I'm a prophet or I'm good people. I'll try to that. Is someone who pursues God approval the same as someone in curse God for us? Okay. So we do all what has been predestined. All. And that is the pleasure of God. Welcome us to this paradise. We are not one who uh, say that we are acted outside the grand design. No person will ever say that. Okay? <clears throat> and therefore, when you Accept that you are to act according to his grand design. There you are, will have peace. But ah, you spirit at peace. Because you accept that you have to do according to grand design. You will be at peace. So Allah said, return to me. Okay. Content and his good pleasure. Enter thou among my bond and enter thou my garden. Yeah. He never said yeah, that, oh, pious man, or that, no way. Spirit at peace. And you are sad that, you know, you have to act according to his, his uh, grand design. It will be all right. It's true or not. Even at the end of your life, who doesn't want to follow the grand design to say he doesn't have accept. At the end of the day, he will realize that nothing can save him except God's pleasure. And that makes him change his concept at the end of the day. And anyway, he has acted until the end, the grand design. He will gain God and the paradise. And people say, no, so people who shirk will not enter paradise. 
before we shut the will not end the paradise. That is wrong. That makes me. Lisa says here, God will not forgive partners associated with him. He says, sure. But will forgive anything less than that to whomsoever he wills. And anyone who ascribe partners to God as three in the world. So they say, well, God can put everybody in paradise. But definitely people who shirk, that means ascribe partners to God, or associate partners to God, they will never enter paradise. <laughs> These people say, no. God will forgive every, everyone and, and any sin, but not shirk. That means you ascribe partner to God. Okay. You will never have to paradise, and that is the, 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 the verse. God will not forgive that partner's face with the sin. Right? But let me explain. Verily, Allah had commanded of Himself that His mercy precede His anger. You see, you see this very clearly. God says His mercy precedes His anger. When this happened, and yet, here you see, when we are in the spirit realm, our kingdom, before we are born, He introduced Himself to us. Am I not your Lord? And you say, yes, you are our Lord. And then He took a statement, and that became the light of faith, the light of faith, that we say you are our Lord. He introduced himself, we accepted it, he became a light of faith, and is inserted in our heart. See, it's inserted, the light of faith is inserted in our heart. Verily I say unto you that our God in creating man, not only created in righteousness, but inserted his heart a light, and that's the light. So he said, yes, you are my Lord. We testify that testimony become a light. That's why every son of Adam born a Muslim, the prophet, because you know, this testimony, which become a light of faith inserted in every infant when they are born. Whether you're Christian or what you're born, the family you're born into, but this faith, and you say, yes, this testimony, yes, you are my Lord. This testimony becomes a light that is inserted in the heart of every infant. And the prophet says, every infant born a Muslim, but the parent did demonstrate, okay, or Satan did demonstrate, but every infant or every son of Adam born a Muslim. And what did you see? This light be darkened by sin, but never extinguished. It's still inside us. It's like even you become uh, unbelievers, that light is still in you. And that's where His mercy precipitates anger. He put this light in you. You are born Muslim. The light is there. And the light, even darkened by sin, is not extinguished. Okay? And that's why the prophet said, uh, Allah created, I, Allah created all my servants as Muslim. Said to met them straight. All children born Muslim, because of this testimony, we can light of faith inserted in every infant. Every infant born Muslim is a parent who led them to be Yahudi, Nastrani, and Mushrik. Okay? But then, see, after Allah inserted this light of faith in a person, at the end of the day, Allah said to the angel, don't allow anyone who is even a little seed of faith in their heart into hell. You see, you see this, when I learned the Quran, 
the mercy of Allah. He put this light of faith in us. Okay, he put it there. He put this the light of faith in you. Every really born a Muslim, and this one darkened by sin, is not extinguished. It's like this, like, and then he, at the end of the day, he told the angel, "Don't let anyone." With a little seed of faith in their heart into hell. So the, the angel will look, come, look at the, oh, you got a little seed of faith. Go, don't come into hell. We'll check and everyone have the little seed of faith in them. All will not be admitted into hell. See, his mercy precedes his anger. <laughs> Before we born, we put this light in there. And then at the end of the day, he say, check, anybody got the light of faith there? Don't let them enter paradise. Everyone have it. Okay. Everyone have it. Then we, I also Rasulullah, there is one, Rasulullah, Rasulullah say, and this uh, is this another revelation, that we granted the book to those who have chosen from our servant to give the book the Torah or angel and one more. Some of them wrong themselves. Some follow a middle course and some are foremost in good deeds. By Allah, we will, that is truly the greatest bounty. So some become bad, some become moderate, some become good. And what Rasulullah said? He said, all of them of the same rank and all of them enter paradise. All of Oh. So be clear that every one of us who acted according to the script of Allah will enter paradise, all of us. And there's no shirk where everyone got the light of faith that, that is blackened but not extinguished. At the end of the, the day, the angel ha 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 has the instruction not to allow people with a little seed of faith to enter paradise. Everyone for this life of faith in them. All is Okay? Now that's, is that cool? But some people, yes. How can God take my loved one? How can God take my young child and what? How can God be that cool? No, that's no cool. Let me explain to you. <clears throat> we are the spirit in the realm of spirits before we are born. We are the spirit in this kingdom of spirit. We are there. All right? Then, and these spirits are created, not born. Therefore, they are 33 years old. Created, remain 33 years old. Created, not born. All the time, 33 years old. All right? And then, he fashioned them and had a spirit of his own creation breathed into them. So he created. The spirit is created, not born. Created 33 years old or remain 33 years old. But then, they are to enter the body of the infant when they're born. Okay? Body of the infant born. And they will act <coughs> accordingly, according to the script. Okay? So, um, they will act according to the script. At the end of the day, God will give them paradise. Okay? And that is where he says, I've, I've, stored, I've stored this paradise. I kept this paradise for you which eyes have never seen, not even hear, heard by the ears, not even heart can imagine it. This is a paradise so beautiful, immensely, uh, what you call it? It's so immense in this uh, stature that you cannot imagine it. And you just try to think, when I, I was much younger, of course not long ago, 
Melayu. <laughs> you know, we play this uh, uh, marble. We play with uh, 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 tin and one more. This, in the early 1960s, 70s, but now, they don't play with marble and tin. <laughs> they have their own. Oh, there's PlayStation, they have the virtual reality, whatnot. See the difference. And the world going to end when the sun expires. And there is 10 billion years. And we have 4.6 years. 10 billion years. That means another uh, 5.4 billion years. Can you imagine? The difference in the game in future. You can't imagine. It. Even we, during our young age, play with marble and tin, cut, but not cigarette boxes, all that. Never can imagine that the game now the children play, PlayStation, virtual reality, you can never imagine. And can you imagine in uh, another uh, 5.4 billion years to come, the state of abusement of the youngsters definitely mind-boggling. And some of the pleasure in, in heaven, paradise, which is in the sixth phase, well, another 2 billion years after the 10 billion years, 10, 12. Definitely the pleasure is, is unpatternable. You cannot fathom it. But, but perfect. You can you can imagine how. And that's why I thought that, which I have never seen, not even heard by years, not even the heart can imagine. No one knows that the light of the eyes are kept in the <coughs> for them as a reward of their deep. So these are the things that God reserves for us for acting according to the predestination. Okay. Okay. <coughs> so we act accordingly and get what we want at the end of the day. Then the question. <coughs> Like that, I would like to act a short, a short part, you know, <laughs> not the long one, short one. So I will still get into paradise. Like an infant born, died. Or I live 10 years, I died. Then I got paradise. So, short script. <laughs> the person who died one short script. But we, the parents say, how can God take our child? What? <laughs> <You know? clears throat> if the child is alive, he may have a lot of problems in his life, but he died early, paradise waiting for him. Okay. Okay. So, so, paradise, I mean, death is a savior for the child. It's a gift from God, right? That people will want to die early at a long age. So, can we die early up to God, not up to us? All right? I did ask my class when, uh, a few years back. Now, you're going to choose which script, short script or long script. Everybody wants short script. <laughs> yeah, short script. But it's not our choice. It's our choice. So those who got the script, very lucky, short script. Those who have a long script, bear with it. Okay. <clears throat> so when we are born, the door of birth and the lifespan and door of death. And during this time, when we are born, the destiny is already tight on our neck. The destiny, our destiny is tight on our neck. All right? I will live according to this destiny. Indeed, you will carry within the Allah decrees 
to the day of return. You follow this destiny. That is the book of life. You follow, okay? Your script. Then you die. You are buried. Now, what I want to tell you is this. The one that died is the body. The body cannot function, could not function anymore because of Jesus, because of old age, because of accident and whatnot. The body, the costume is uh, uh, was torn up, torn, torn up or the damage that the costume cannot be found they're not functionable anymore. So when the body cannot function anymore, God released our spirit in the body. The one that act is the spirit in the body. The body is just a costume. You got the body of a Chinese, you become Chinese. The spirit will act as a Chinese. You got the body of a Malay, the spirit will act as a Malay. You got a body of a female, the spirit will act as a female. And vice versa, if you're male. So the spirits are the actor, not the body. But if the body is damaged beyond repair, God is merciful. Let the spirit out. Okay, time's up. Your body is damaged, cannot be repaired. Off you go into the nether world. Or what you call <coughs> the so the body is buried, it's just your clothes. So the book of life finished, and then you enter the nether world, which is Alam Bazak in the world. And behind those, I mean the one who died, there is a barrier. That is the, the Bazak is the barrier. Right? And behind that barrier they shall wait. So we will be in that barrier. Our spirit will be in that that uh, realm, and we will uh, uh, rest there. It's a transit area until until resurrection. And mind you, remember when we die. The you remember the, the the book of life is the destiny is hang on our neck. So when we die. Our body and the destiny, the book of life is left behind. We enter into this uh, neither world, this barrier in the world we enter without memory. And we uh, rest there peacefully. Memory left behind. Your memory is brought forward into the neither world. There's still war with Hitler. Still war continues with Yamashita. A lot of women homesick want to go back because just give birth, give, give birth, die. Miss the infant. They want to go back. A lot of crying. Who are, who are? <laughs> they were pissed. All right? So, memory left behind. And you enter that 33 years old spirit, come up from the body, go into this alam baza or the land of, uh, of barrier, you enter and you rest there. It's a transit until resurrection. Okay? So there you see, from the, the stage, you enter uh, the realm of spirit, okay, there, enter, and then you remain in the nether world. Okay. And they will be used of 33 years old because the spirit is 33. So all will be 33 years old. And mind you, when we are resurrected, we are given a new body that I'll cover later in later lectures. We are resurrected with a new body, new clothes, new body. And that body will be 33 years old to uh, uh, sing, sing with the, our our spirit, to be equal to our spirit. Our spirit 33, the body 33. If everyone born 33 years old, new body, 
So there won't be any grandmother, grandfather, <laughs> no brother, sister, no wife, or the retreat. Of it, no infant, no. All the people with new body and the mind is empty because you left your memory behind. Okay? So the question is if we have a new body, what sin is the new body committed to enter to hell? <laughs> hey, Allah see all my creation worship me in their own way. <laughs> So the new body have atoms and atom worship God in their own way. New body only in use when we are resurrected. The first day we come in, the new body is used. What sin has the new body committed when they do hell? Just think of that. That's why everyone will enter paradise. And when you are resurrected, you can't remember you are the faithful, the believers, or unbelievers, you don't have because the memory gone. The memory is for you to act when you live in this world. When you die, the memory is left behind. So when you are resurrected, you don't remember your un the unbelievers or believers. No way, you can't remember. You're born with a new body and your mind clean. No memory. Okay. So, period. How can a person enter into paradise, uh, into hell with a new body? So, I will stop here. Inshallah, we will continue next week. Uh, back to the coordinator, Mr. Bayu. For maybe we have 10 minutes. Yeah. I'll say Thank you very much, Ustaz. Terima kasih, Ustaz. Oke, okay, Ustaz, dilanjut, dilanjut dengan Zikrullah, Ustaz. 10 menit, Ustaz. Oke. Okay. So, uh, let's uh, put in our mind Allah. Okay, now my Allah. So, we know that what we want to remember in our memory, in our mind is Allah. Allah. Focus. Focus. Once we are focused, then we stay fast. Please proceed and be steadfast for 10 minutes.
Sudah 10 menit, Ustaz. Oke, Alhamdulillah. Insya Allah, Alhamdulillah. 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 Alh